Welcome to Watch Mojo, and today we're counting down our picks for the top 21 horror movie monsters of each year from 2000 to 2020. For this list, we're looking at the greatest, scariest, and most iconic monsters from each year of the 21st century. The definition of monster can be quite loose, so for this list, we'll simply be defining it as anything inhuman. Also, only horror movies will be included, so monsters from non-horror films will be excluded. Obviously, spoilers will follow. Which of these monsters do you find the scariest? Let us know in the comments below. 2000, The Aliens, Pitch Black. Serving as the first film in the Riddick franchise, Pitch Black takes place on a distant planet inhabited by violent, sun-fearing alien creatures known as Bioraptors. Unfortunately for the characters of the movie, the planet is undergoing an extended eclipse, ensuring that they are in constant danger of the Bioraptors' vicious attacks. Their only line of defense are creative uses of light, most of which are completely useless against the agile creatures. The humans are also at a significant disadvantage owing to the Bioraptor's incredible hearing and use of echolocation, allowing them to see in the pitch black darkness. They wiped out all life on their planet just as they wiped out most of the characters in the movie. These things do not mess around. 2001, The Creeper, Jeepers Creepers. This cult favorite begins normally enough, with siblings Trish and Derry being stalked by a malicious truck driver intent on taking them off the road. <laughs> However, they later make a more sinister discovery. The truck driver is actually the Creeper, an otherworldly creature who awakens every 23 years to feast on 23 victims. <laughs> Despite the creature's humanoid appearance, it is anything but. It showcases unbelievable strength and agility, it screeches with a blood-chilling menace, and scariest of all, it has the ability to regenerate body parts by eating the respective limbs and organs of its victims. What is he doing? There's nothing creepier than a seemingly indestructible monster with a taste for human flesh. 2002, The Infected, 28 Days Later. <laughs> Director Danny Boyle and writer Alex Garland reinvented the zombie genre with 28 Days Later, depicting a different sort of zombie that ran, screeched, turned within a matter of seconds, and infected through blood rather than bite. These zombies were both unique and refreshing. They broke many pre-established rules and terrified viewers on a purely primal level. They are nothing but bloody, raging psychopaths filled with such an incredible degree of anger that they are willing to hunt and mutilate other human beings. Their status as zombies can be disputed, but what cannot be is the far-reaching influence they had on the popular subgenre. 2003, Vampires and Lichens, Underworld. The likes of vampires and werewolves have been the subject of literature and myth for centuries, and in 2003, Underworld depicted an ancient war between the two monster species. Like traditional vampires, the ones in Underworld feast on blood and possess some superhuman powers like enhanced strength and agility. Similarly, the lichens feast on human flesh and exhibit supernaturally enhanced traits, resulting in a fair and equal pairing. And like many literary werewolves, their primary weakness is silver. The monsters of this film don't veer much from their traditional counterparts, but then again, those are iconic traits for a reason. They just work. 2004, Kayako Saiki, The Grudge. The early 2000s experienced a wave of Japanese horror, and The Grudge was one of the most popular of them all. 
Serving as an American remake of the iconic Japanese original, The Grudge concerns a care worker named Karen who experiences supernatural occurrences in a Tokyo house. The primary antagonist is Kayako, a dangerous ghost whose very face has become a memorable piece of horror movie history. Her physical appearance is blood-curdling, complete with a chilly paleness and menacingly bulging eyes. There are also her inhuman movements to consider, as evidenced in the classic scene in which Kayako descends the staircase. Forget her supernatural abilities. Just glimpsing this thing is enough to have viewers reaching for the remote in fear. 2005. Crawlers – The Descent Like Jeepers Creepers, The Descent begins in mundane horror before venturing into something more surreal and nightmarish. A group of women go spelunking and experience some scary and life-threatening events, like getting stuck in an enclosed space. And then they discover the crawlers. <laughs> These are humanoid creatures who live in an undiscovered cave system and hunt the women who invade their space. Being native to the dark caves, they exhibit strengths that the humans lack, including echolocation and the ability to climb walls. Both traits make them exceptional hunters, and coming across one is a near-guaranteed death. <laughs> These are the last things you want to see in a pitch-black cave thousands of feet underground. 2006 – The Pale Man – Pan's Labyrinth Guillermo del Toro's fantasy masterpiece isn't exactly scary, but it contains one of the most horrific monsters of the 21st century. It's implied that the Pale Man is a child-eating monster who lures starving kids with the promise of food. That alone is terrifying enough, but it's the monster's physical design that made it famous. After Ophelia trips its trap, the blind Pale Man picks up his own eyeballs off a plate, stuffs them into gaping holes in his palms, and brings his palms to his face, resulting in one of the most petrifying sights in movie history. The Pale Man highlights the amazing imagination of Del Toro and his design team, representing fantasy filmmaking at its absolute finest. Two thousand seven, various monsters, the mist. Based on Stephen King's novella of the same name, The Mist sees a group of people barricading themselves inside a grocery store when a mysterious mist unleashes extra-dimensional monsters on the town. All of these monsters are unique and horrifying in their own ways. There are giant insects, massive tentacled creatures, 50-foot-tall arachna lobsters, and flying creatures resembling pterodactyls. But the most horrifying of all is the behemoth, a six-legged tentacled creature that towers into the mist and shakes the very ground with its booming footsteps. The mist does alien horror perfectly, depicting a race of nasty creatures far beyond our comprehension. 2008, Clover, Cloverfield. Producer J.J. Abrams conceived Clover to give America its own monster in the vein of Godzilla. The enormous creature of Cloverfield comes from the water and completely decimates New York City overnight. Its first order of business? Decapitating the Statue of Liberty and sending its head careening into the streets of Manhattan. <laughs> Clover is 250 feet tall and walks on four elongated limbs. It's also the host of numerous parasites, which proceed to drop off its body and wreak their own type of bloody havoc. <laughs> Adding to the horror is Clover's complete invulnerability, as it easily withstands the likes of conventional weaponry, artillery shells, and carpet bombing. Abrams accomplished what he set out to do. Shit right there. That's what I'm talking about. 2009, The Bell Dam, Other Mother, Coraline. You're just in time for supper, dear.
Henry Selleck has directed some of the greatest stop-motion films in movie history, and he continued his streak with 2009's Coraline. The main antagonist of the film is the Beldam, a creature who lures children to another dimension known as the Otherworld and steals their souls. It also takes the physical appearance of Coraline's mother, Mel Jones, resulting in the moniker Other Mother. Now, you're going to stay here forever. An extra-dimensional, soul-sucking spider is the stuff of nightmares, and its other mother persona strikes fear by warping the everyday. It takes something comfortable and safe like a mother and twists it into a deranged and dangerous iteration. It's scary both on a physical and metaphorical level. 2010, the further, lipstick face demon, Insidious. Directed by James Wan and proving his mastery of the haunted house genre, Insidious follows a kid named Dalton who holds the ability of astral projection. His mind astrally travels to the further, a hell-like void filled with angry souls and ruled by the lipstick face demon. The demon has the physical appearance of a traditional devil, complete with a red face, a tail, horns, and hooves. It is highly malevolent towards children, not only keeping them imprisoned in the further, but also attempting to take their souls. His lack of motivation is exactly what makes him so scary. He's just a devilish creature, and he wants to cause some chaos. 2011, Many Monsters, The Cabin in the Woods. Drew Goddard's The Cabin in the Woods is a wonderful deconstruction of the slasher genre, and it contains, well, all the monsters. An underground lab manipulates a cabin in the woods to slay various horror archetypes in an act of human sacrifice to the Ancient Ones. The lab contains a host of different monsters that are used to attack the cabin's inhabitants, and these monsters are eventually let loose on the lab itself. Oh, these monsters include a giant snake, robots, scarecrows, a merman, and even a man with saw blades through his head known as Fornicus, Lord of Bondage and Pain. The film's imagination is rich, and the execution is nothing short of chaotically bloody. <laughs> 2012, Bagul, Sinister. The name is admittedly a little goofy, but Bagul proves a sinister entity. Pun very much intended. Like a few other villains on this list, Bagul's primary motivation is to consume the souls of children. He also manipulates the children into going after their own family members and filming the violent action on Super 8 film. These films are then found and watched by true crime writer Ellison Oswalt, who uncovers the demonic truth of Bagul. They depict some truly horrific sights, like children setting their families on fire and running over them with lawnmowers. This is dark stuff, and it proves Bagul as one of the most menacing demonic figures of the decade. 2013, Mama, Mama. No, 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 Lily, Lily, Lily. 2013 was a great year for horror. James Wan thrilled us yet again with The Conjuring and created a fantastic monster in Bathsheba. But the more original and arguably the scarier monster is Mama. Mama makes for a perfect urban legend. She was once a mentally unhinged woman named Edith Brennan who broke out of an asylum, stabbed a nun, and did unspeakable things with her baby. Now she stalks the earth as Mama, a horribly deformed creature looking for her baby. The story is certainly a creepy one, but it's Mama's physical appearance and characteristics that draw much of the horror, especially the hair-raising way in which she quickly scuttles and crawls across the floor. 2014, The Babadook, The Babadook. 2014 was another great year, and it saw the releases of two of the greatest horror movies of the 2010s. Both also used horror as a metaphor, it Follows was a masterpiece of independent filmmaking that used its titular It monster to represent sexually transmitted diseases. 
Meanwhile, first-time director Jennifer Kent was using The Babadook to tell a morose and traumatic story about depression. Of course, The Babadook works on a purely physical level, as its ghostly appearance, erratic movements, and gravelly voice all inspire horror. But much of its fear stems from what it represents, successfully tapping into the human condition and expressing the harmful effects of grief. <laughs> 2015, Krampus, Krampus. We can all place Krampus next to Gremlins in the non-traditional Christmas movie starring Deadly Monsters category. Krampus has its roots in real-world folklore, as it's said to be a Christmas creature who punishes children for misbehaving. The movie version of Krampus embarks on a horrific and bloody rampage, targeting all the naughty people and sending their souls to hell. I just wanted Christmas to be like it used to be. Krampus also uses the help of various creatures and mechanisms, including his evil elves and some possessed toys. Christmas movies are filled with boring age-old tropes, so it was refreshing to see one so gleefully unhinged. Just don't be naughty and enjoy. 2016, Diana Walter, Lights Out. In December of 2013, David F. Sandberg released an independent short titled Lights Out Through YouTube. It proved to be an instant hit, and both Sandberg and his wife moved to Hollywood to begin work on a feature-length adaptation. It follows a malevolent entity known as Diana Walter, who was once a 13-year-old with a rare skin condition, but who is now a violent ghost who only appears in the dark. The gimmick is both original and refreshing, and it results in some unique scares. The character design of Diana is also eerily off-putting, appearing as little more than a skinny shadow figure who stares at her victims in gleeful anticipation. It's all very creepy stuff. <laughs> 2017, It, Pennywise, It. To float. This adaptation of Stephen King's It was widely anticipated. The $35 million budget promised good things, and It has always remained one of King's most popular novels. The results were nothing short of fantastic. Bill Skarsgård had big clown shoes to fill by replacing Tim Curry as Pennywise, but he knocked it out of the park. Let him go! No, I'll take him. I'll take all of you, and I'll feast on your flesh as I feed on your fear." Skarsgård imbued Pennywise with the perfect amount of boastful confidence, as the character has long been known for his playful tormenting. Come to the clown, Ned. You'll float down here. We'll float down here. Yes, we do. <laughs> the laugh was also spectacular, as was that creepy thing he did with his eyes. Pennywise literally feeds on the fear of children, and that fear extends to the audience. Horror movie villains don't get much more iconic or scarier than this. 2018, The Monsters, A Quiet Place. The concept behind A Quiet Place is so deceptively simple it makes you think, how has this not been done before? The movie takes place in a post-apocalyptic America that's been wiped out by sound-sensitive monsters known as Death Angels. Any little noise is enough to draw their attention, and they pounce with surprising speed and dexterity. They're also incredibly ruthless, and the film never shies away from tragedy, as evidenced by its heartbreaking opening minutes. The monsters also inspire a lot of potential for world-building, as many questions remain as to their origin and biology. Put simply, these are fascinating creatures that are both tantalizing, 
merciless, and richly mysterious. <laughs> 2019, The Color, Color Out of Space. Author H.P. Lovecraft is renowned for his unique style of literature, his themes often revolving around incomprehensible horror and the resulting insanity of the witness. Do you have any idea how much those animals cost us? They are alpacas. Alpacas. One of the most popular works in his lifetime was The Color Out of Space, published in 1927 and adapted by Richard Stanley 92 years later. Ah! The story involves a malignant color that comes to Earth on a meteorite and begins affecting the local Gardner family with its otherworldly influence. Like the best of Lovecraft's fiction, the movie never goes into detail about the color. The audience is forced to answer their own questions, and that often proves to be the scariest type of horror. Before we continue, be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. You have the option to be notified for occasional videos or all of them. If you're on your phone, make sure you go into your settings and switch on notifications. 2020, Cthulhu, Underwater. And speaking of HP Lovecraft, Cthulhu remains his most popular creation. The subject of The Call of Cthulhu, the massive squid-like thing has been a pop culture fixation for decades and inspired its own shared fictional universe known as the Cthulhu Mythos. Underwater is loosely inspired by the Cthulhu Mythos, and it features an amazing rendition of its eponymous creature. It's a great depiction of a classic literary monster horrifically capturing its unimaginable size, grotesque and alien physical appearance, and incredible sense of danger. Do you agree with our picks? Check out this other recent clip from WatchMojo, and be sure to subscribe and ring the bell to be notified about our latest videos.